Like many South African footballers, I dreamt of playing in Europe. I dreamt of being where Messi is, where Ronaldo is, where Wright is. The truth is, we all had that dream. I was one of the lucky few to make it a reality. Imagine training and playing with 255 players throughout your development years, all of them with special talent, some of them better than you, and only 10 of us made it pro, and only 2 of us made it to Europe. I've been at this club for about a year now and I must say I had a lot of learning to do. When I first got into the academy, I was immediately put in with the under-17s and I defined myself as a creative playmaker. Now because of that, I had to learn very quickly how to pass like to a European level. I had to learn very quickly how to dribble and also how to function as a central attacking midfielder in this team. And after months of training, I finally get the opportunity to show the coach what I have learned. So there was an invitational, a friendly invitational held in England and the coach saw this as a good opportunity to try out a lot of the younger players. In fact, he brought the entire youth academy class of 2022 to this preseason tournament, myself included, and he basically told us to have fun out there, to do our best, and if we did well enough, we could all get promoted into the first team. So once I heard this, of course, I knew that as soon as I got onto that pitch, as soon as I got subbed on, I had to make the most of every single moment I was on the field. And I did that as much as possible, as you saw, putting in some crisp passes, getting a couple of ankle breakers. But of course, football is a team sport, and I will give credit where credit is due. Every single one of us were hungry for victory year. In fact, every single one of us were hungry to show ourselves to the coach to prove that we have what it takes to be first team players. So we did put up a very good fight against a Bundesliga level opponent. It probably wasn't their full strength team, but it was still a good performance from us. Up next was Bristol City, and from my research and fandom of the English football pyramid, I know these guys are in the EFL championship. So a good performance here would definitely turn some heads and impress our coach. But another good way to impress a coach is to follow their instructions. And as an attacking midfielder, the coach made it very clear that I was going to be the heartbeat of this team. As a traditional shadow striker is definitely something that I was not used to, and it's definitely something that took a while for me to get used to. As a creative playmaker in 1860 München, I had a pretty busy job. I would have to be the one who collects the ball from clearances and defensive actions, and also just basically be the bridge between the defensive third and the attacking third. And in this team, this meant that I'd have to do a lot of running. I'd have to be a box-to-box -box midfielder because to get the ball a lot easier and to make it easier for my defense to give me the ball, I'd have to basically follow the ball where it is. So if it's in the defensive third, I'd have to be there. Even if I'm not the one helping in defense, I'd have to be somewhere around that area to pick up the ball and carry it forward with as much pace as possible to start a counter-attack. You'll see many examples of this in this preseason tournament and you'll also see a lot of examples of me showing these defenders what I learned back at home. It's pretty entertaining, although sometimes I get away without a bruise but a lot of the times I definitely have to pay in some way for getting past these opponents. But we do end up picking up a 1-0 victory and overall it was a great performance from everybody involved. And my performance was good enough to get myself the Man of the Match award. It was now time for the final game of this preseason tour in England. We kicked things off and as a first impression to these boys I decided to break one of their ankles. And 13 minutes in after some good defense we were on the counter attack I received the ball and as you know I carried the ball forward, broke another man's ankles, and it looked like I was gonna head into the box, maybe take a shot, but no, I kind of ruined it by going for the fake shot. But we kept this attack alive, I got the ball at the edge of the box, they thought I was going left, but instead I shot it towards the right, and I scored the first goal of my professional career. In the 44th minute, we were on another counter attack, I decided to break another man's ankles, pass the ball to Diogo da Silva. And a few seconds later, it was a five-man counter-attack. And answer this in the comments. Is this not the best way to end a counter-attack? Oh, oh, How about that for the degree of difficulty? Simply off the charts! 
But things don't end there. We increase the tempo once more, we're on the attack, it's looking pretty nice, and I give it to Sherlock, he gives it back to me, and it's a pretty simple finish into the bottom right hand corner, for my first hat trick of my career. But then again, we must not forget that technically, these hat tricks don't count as I break another angle. These hat tricks and Man of the Match awards don't count here since this is still preseason, these aren't competitive fixtures. But don't get it twisted, these are still some big moments that I'm definitely not gonna forget. And this day almost got even better as I was on the attack once more, fresh from breaking a couple of angles I took a shot, but unfortunately this one could not get in to give me my fourth goal of the match. But I ain't complaining, a hat trick is still a hat trick and that's definitely something to be happy about. Our happiness does not last however, as it seems like the first team players were not very happy with our coach's decision. And the media made sure that we wouldn't forget that all eyes would be on us now. We are the biggest football story in the world right now, or at least the weirdest one yet. So yeah, there's a lot of pressure on us as the new starting 11, the perfect academy is going to be the new starting 11 of 1860 Munich. And it's going to be a lot of pressure on us to perform and to give this team and the fans the promotion hopes that they were hoping for. Now thankfully for us, we do still have squad depth, not every single starting 11 player left the coach was able to convince some of the reserves that weren't on the trip to stay and they agreed because honestly for them I guess it's more game time for them or at least they have the better opportunity of getting game time. But it was still pretty surprising to see him field us as the starting 11 as opposed to the more experienced players because some of these reserves were in their early 20s, mid 20s whereas we are all still teenagers and very young teenagers at that. No one on this pitch is even 18 years old. But you still have to give credit to us, we have to look at it this way, we are holding our own against fully grown adults while we're still technically teenagers, we're still able to push the fight towards our opponents here and hopefully we'll be able to silence the haters, silence the critics by winning the first game of our season. And Diogo da Silva gets us off on the right foot by scoring our first goal of the game. Heading into the second half, the coach was very happy with our performances and he asked us, in fact he begged us to do more of the same because he told us that if we kept on putting the pressure on but if we were smart, if we remain calm, then we will be able to win this game. And he also had a personal small conversation with me just before I headed out of the tunnel and he told me that I needed to tone down the dribbling a little bit because he said that I was losing the ball too many times for his liking as a creative playmaker. He said that I was slowing down the tempo of a few attacks lacking the ability to pick my head up and to find those proper long passes that he prefers me making. Now of course I heard him out but when I got back onto that field I just I couldn't stop myself the dribbling was just a bit too fun for me and I continued to do it and looking back that was probably a mistake because despite me scoring one of the best goals of my career once again he immediately subs me off. Yeah, I won't lie, it was a little bit awkward going back onto the bench. And he didn't really hide the fact that he was kind of upset with me. I could see it in his eyes. I could see that, uh, yeah, he's he's not happy with me. I, uh, I messed up here. So, uh, yeah, you know, I keep my mouth shut. I keep my head down. I walk to the bench and I sit down and I watch the rest of the game. And I'll be honest, Johansson, the man I, I was subbed off for, he, he wasn't having the best of games. He was being bullied on the field. And to be honest, his playstyle kind of killed the bridge between our defensive third and our attacking third he wasn't going into the deep midfield to collect the ball instead he waited for it and because of that well yeah nothing else really happened in our offense at least we won the game 2-0 you know we silenced the critics but i would be lying if i said that i wasn't concerned for my spot on the team I spoke to Keegan and Diogo about it and they just said that I shouldn't really worry about it too much, you know, I'm still an important player to this team and I showed it on the field. I gave him a good enough reason to keep me on the team so I will probably be starting in the next game but I'm not so sure to be honest. I do have a feeling that I am going to lose the spot that I worked so hard for during preseason during all these months and honestly, it sucks thinking about that. 